Hi everybody, I've been building some dreadnoughts lately and uh, this is one of my uh, my most recent results and um, yeah, I think you, you will recognize this one, this is the old boxy style dreadnought and I, I really love this, this design, it's uh, especially the, the top part, it's big, it's bulky, it's uh, angular and um, it's classic. It's a classic. The only thing is, I don't like the legs. The legs are too stubby for me. Uh, they're, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that this will ever walk. I mean, this neither, of course, because uh, that, that's not how, how physical <laughs> work. So yeah, uh, like like the body, I like the arms, I like the, the whole look of it, but the, the legs, I'm not a big fan of it. So uh, I wanted to make a new one, but then with bigger legs, like elongated legs. And that's what I uh, what I have here in my hands. And the build is not completely finished yet because I still need to do a lot of green stuff work. Uh, the top's not finished. I will leave that separate for painting purposes as well, so that it can uh, nicely reach everything. And of course, it still needs a lot of cables, but that will be the next step. Now, in this video, I'll be showing um, how I uh, how I made this. How I made the legs. Uh, this is the back of the legs. If you're interested. I actually filmed the whole process and I made a time-lapse video of it so you can see exactly what I did and I'll, uh, uh, I'll make a cup of coffee and then I'll sit uh, and watch the video together with you and uh, add some comments yeah that's it enjoy most of the work you'll see me do uh, especially at the start is uh, yeah just the legs <laughs> the le legs were most of the preparation for this uh, dreadnought also because um, I mean the, as I said, the uh, the old boxy dread. I like the the visuals of it a lot, but it's just the legs are too stubby. So what I wanted to do was, was to, I wanted to make the legs longer than uh, than the regular ones. So what you see me do here is, is saw everything apart into uh, uh, into three separate things. So the uh, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. And uh, further on, I will connect these back together with, with brass rod. But first, I need to get everything apart and, uh, and clean it up. So it's a lot of sawing, a lot of filing, and uh, basically getting everything into smaller and smaller parts. And then uh, after getting everything apart, um, I do a lot of test fitting. So that's what you see me do here, just picking up the parts, see how they fit together and uh, see if everything, everything still works or not. And also I'm, I'm looking at what I want to still get rid of and what I want to keep for the rest of the build. So at this point I decided to, uh, to remove the small uh, beams as well, so that I have everything separate. Because first I wanted to keep the, the lower ankles and the, uh, and the knees together and then I decided not to do that after all. So I, uh, I cut those apart and now I really have everything separate. There's still some small beams attached to the knees, but I'll, uh, I'll get those off later. So here you have everything. Uh, continuing, um, more cleanup, clean, 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 clean up, and um, removing excess stuff. So here I'm preparing the, uh, the hips to get a uh, brass rod in there, as you'll see in a, in a moment. Um, because I, uh, as these are the legs, they will have to bear the, the load of the entire miniature. So I, I, I can't just glue it together as they are right now, because that wouldn't hold up as well. So I need some, some, uh, yeah, some strong connection on the inside. Uh, more cleanup, and I think we're nearly there. Yeah, so here I'm uh, getting some uh, polystyrene rod, and this is my main building material for uh, for decoration. And the brass rod that you see here is uh, I'm going to use that for uh, for structure. So um, I'm drilling some holes here to make sure that everything uh, will go through nicely. And this is mainly by eye, so I, I don't measure anything. I'll just get a, a right drill that I hope is okay, and I'll fit whether it goes or not. There we go. I think I find the right one here. 
More drilling. This hand drill is fantastic, by the way. I've already had it for a long time, and it was one of the uh, best purchases, I guess, of my life. It's fantastic for pinning anything. Yeah, so final pass. The biggest... Uh, biggest drill. And here I'm... Um, test fitting with a brass rod and I'm not sure whether it's long enough so I'll take out my dreadnought a size comparison and then I also compared it to my scout walker that I uh, built some time ago because that was more of the height that I was going for anyway so that was a bit of a better comparison I guess and um, yeah so um, to make it visually clearer whether I'm high enough I wanted to try some uh, some armor plates um, and right here I decided it was too long anyway, so I cut off a bit. Um, that Redemptor plate also got me a bit of the height for the, from the Redemptor Dreadnought. So, second one. And then glue it together. So there we are. Um, I'm just using some uh, polyacrylate glue, glue, <coughs> glue here. And I use these tiny tubes because they, uh, they, the polyacrylate glue dries out quite quickly. Um, and with the small tubes you lose the least amount of, uh, of glue that way. Yeah, and this is the... Now we get to the more important bit, I guess, which is the posing. Um, before I, I start working on the upper legs with brass rod, uh, I'll try to pose everything uh, with, with uh, the sticky putty. So I just pretend that that white blob is my upper leg right now and um, yeah for better comparison also needed some feet so I got the feet from the dreadnought and um, just stick everything together with the putty so that I know whether I'm going in the right direction of the overall model because if you're just focusing on the lower legs in one go um, and you finish the lower legs completely then after a while you might very well discover that once you start working on the upper legs, it doesn't work at all. So, yeah. And a size comparison next to my boxy dreadnought, just to see if the height is uh, going the right place. Looking uh, at some plates, whether they will work or not. So at this point I decided I, uh, the, the, I was going the right direction, so I want to drill through the hip because that was the, is the joint that will take the most of the, of the weight, I guess. So I needed a really strong uh, brass rod in there. And so you won't even see the brass rod when everything's done. It's really there just for, for structural uh, integrity. And what I first did is I... Uh, drilled the rod through the bottom rod of the hip and um, yeah that got very messy because that uh, didn't that meant I couldn't properly rotate uh, the hips the hip joints anymore so um, after a while uh, I decided to start over again basically and I removed that rod from the center so here I'm just fooling around noticing that it's not gonna work with this this hip construction what you're about to see next is what happens if you stay too long in the sticky putty part of the process because uh, you can use all the sticky putty that you want but it's not structurally tight so what you'll see is uh, me messing around and at a certain point it just doesn't work anymore it starts wobbling and then uh, well stuff like that happens well that usually means that you're at the point where you need to start uh, fixing stuff together and then this is uh, what I said this is where I decided to to move the, the brass rod to the center of the hip joint so that I had more control over the rotation together with the, uh, the upper parts of the legs
Yeah, so here I decided to attach the the lower legs to the upper legs, to, or to actually build the upper legs. So I drilled another hole into the top of the knee, and wanted to connect that with the with another brass rod to the to the top of the hip. So here I'm drilling my hole, adding some rod, drilling another hole on the other side, and then I'll be able to attach it together. So again, I didn't really measure anything. I just uh, took a, a length of rod, uh, saw whether it worked well or not, and then decided to remove a bit of it to make it a bit shorter. And uh, well, the whole same process for the other leg. Here we go. I know I'm valuable here. The people need what I have to give them. Most of what I'm doing here is just posing it and seeing whether the pose works. Because right now the, the rods are in there, but I can still rotate them a little bit. I'm, uh, I got the, the chest piece back on it as well. And just see whether the pose works or whether something needs to be done. And then also the height comparison to the, the original dreadnought. Um, yeah, so I decided I was fine with that um, and got the glue out. Because all the pieces were were still fit into to place a little bit just by by tension uh, and then when adding the glue uh, i can get everything into place and now i'm replacing it to a different uh, base because there i uh, i don't have to deal with those, those rocks just a flat base allows me to to pose the, the the feet better because i wanted to have the feet in there now as well Get the plates on there to see whether it works. Yeah, and this is just all posing, nothing else. Such a poser. At this point I was uh, quite happy with the pose, so I wanted to fix it, so I broke up my glue and then... Don't fuck it. Oh, cock. Godverdomme. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the life of a model builder for you. <laughs> uh, just two stick, two brass rods and a bit of super glue doesn't hold everything that you need. And again... Uh, the, the sticky putty is not the, the, the answer to everything either, so sometimes it's just a mix. But I fixed it up anyway, and we uh, got where we needed to be. So here I'm um, working on the lower legs, uh, because the dreadnought has three beams uh, around the, the central beam of the lower leg, if you look at the back of the model. And I wanted to just have the same as, as the original model, but then longer. So I had a, a thinner piece of brass rod, drilled some holes, and uh, yeah, glued that into place as well. Yeah, and here you see also see me drawing holes into the, the side of the knee and that's because there's cable sticking out of there on the original model and I want to attach those later on as well. And I know that if I don't drill out those holes right now, I won't 
ever be able to reach them later on. So I just drill them out um, as a precaution right now. It's not very necessary because I can just also glue stuff. Uh, sorry, glue the green stuff uh, tubes to them anyway. But having a hole in there makes it easier to attach them more properly. And here I'm um, working on the upper legs again because the upper legs are right now just one single uh, brass rod, but they need some thickness to it. So I had some H beams here, um, yeah, and glued them next to it just to have a, a wider upper leg. Again, there's no measurements here. It's just all eyeballing it and clipping off a bit and then uh, re removing uh, too much if it's too long or throwing it away and starting over if it's too short. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll put pieces next to each other once I have a, a proper size, but um, I won't measure anything or uh, calculate how long it should be. And these are plastic rods, so I can glue them together with the plastic glue, not the polyacrylate. Um, um, yeah, taking out the old red note for reference. And uh, yeah, I'll just decorate it a bit more. There's, there's no real science to it. I'll just pick up some, some tubes and some, some uh, profiles and see what looks, looks nice. Um, here I took a, a, an L shaped, uh, like a corner profile and stuck it on top of the, uh, of the rod. So right now you cannot even see the, the rod anymore once I glued it on. And but you'll notice later on, like at the end of the build, there is going to be an armor plate over that whole part. So you won't ever see that again. And I'm, I really don't care about any of that. I'll just build it as I go and putting more work in on here um, that I, I don't know, ruin or, or hide later on. It doesn't really matter to me because it's so, uh, I don't know right now how it's going to look anyway. So I might as well make it look cool as it is and then move on um, instead of regretting later that I didn't do that anyway. And there we have another test fit. So I just keep going back with, with, uh, with the, the chest piece just to see whether the whole, the whole thing looks okay. Um, because sometimes it's, uh, as I said, right? The, the, the piece that you're focusing on looks fantastic, but then you look at the whole model and it just uh, doesn't work as a, as a complete picture. So that's why I'm uh, getting back to it. And also, again, just holding the original next to it just to see whether I'm going the right direction or not. So it's building, test fitting, building, test fitting, building, test fitting. That's mainly my, uh, my process. So at this point, I uh, started to move on to the upper body to see uh, what I wanted to do there. Again, because I um, I don't I didn't want to fix the, the the leg plates on there before knowing what the top body was going to look like. And as you can see here, I'm also using Adeptus Titanicus parts. These are uh, Warlord parts and Reaver parts, and they have a bit of different detailing than the than the uh, 40k parts, of course. And it doesn't really matter, but what I want to make sure is that it would fit in with the plates on the bottom. So that the style of the top plates would resemble the style of the bottom plates. And if I would glue the leg plates into place before working on the upper body, that would constrain me on what I could do with the upper body uh, while still making it look as a, a whole thing. Right? Now, uh, taking out some guns as well. I knew that the left arm was going to be the, the, like the, the frag drill from the ironclad dreadnought. A huge, huge drill. I thought it would fit very well with the miniature so uh, I wanted to have that on there but I wasn't sure about the other arm yet whether it was going to be an arm or a cannon or a gun or whatever and at this point I was uh, quite happy with these uh, warlord plates on top of it and here I'm trying to fit in a, another missile launcher as well you'll see that come back a couple of times and uh, here we have like I'm yeah assembling that frag drill because I, I knew for sure that that was going to go on there. And, and then from there I could work on what it was. Now the arms of the, the, the original Dreadnought are attached with a, uh, a, a nub, which you see here me cutting off, because I thought that those arms were a bit too high on the shoulders. I, sorry, the shoulders were too high on the, on the chassis. So uh, if I wanted to lower them, I had to cut, out, cut off that nub, because otherwise I couldn't lower it. So that's what I did on both sides. 
this point I decided that those top plates of the legs were, were fine. I had those uh, in, in place a couple of times already in the meantime with, with putty, but I just want to have them. So here I glued them and I started fitting some lower plates. These are Reaver, no sorry, Warlord plates, which I really liked. But I wasn't too sure about them because there's this, this gap in them. Um, so it was an option at this point, not, not sure. And here I'm just holding some other plates in front of it to see. This is a, an Armager shoulder pad, which I had left over from another project. Uh, and here we have some uh, plates from the Dreadnought, Warlord plates. Yeah, let's see how that looks. I was kind of happy with this one. And here we have, I think, an Armager leg plate. No, sorry, first some Dark Angels. Another sharp plate. Yeah, here it is. I was quite interested in this one because it it, it is shaped very well over the, the knee as well. So I looked up my other one because I had two left. And this made me kind of happy, but it was they were quite thin. I mean, if you look at the Terminators and, and most of the Space Marines, they have these flared lower legs, right? So that, that didn't really fit with me. I don't know, but I was interested. This is a shield from an uh, Adeptus Custodes. Also interested in that, but not convinced. <laughs> Front plate from a Dreadnought. <laughs> yeah, I usually just hold up anything that I can find, which looks like an armor plate, and then see whether that's going to work or not. And uh, sometimes you get some very unexpected results for there. And here I uh, start finishing the hips, so more plastic rods, just to finish that construction. And I try to make it uh, look close to, you, to the original again, because that's three rods connected to both sides. And here I'm seeing whether I can make some side construction, which I did. So from the lower hip, sorry, from the yeah, from lower hip joint to the upper ankle no <laughs> i don't know this body part to <laughs> to the upper part of the knee <laughs> somewhere over there yeah just to get some some structural integrity just visual right i mean this doesn't really add any structural integrity to my uh, to my dreadnought miniature anyway it's just uh, it's there to look cool uh, and also to make it look convincing so to say And then also adding some more beams to the upper legs, to the back side of the upper legs, just to make them more uh, yeah, stable, I don't know. And here I, uh, I kind of measured it uh, with a, uh, like a pencil, um, as you can see now, I'm drawing where I think it's, it needs to be, simply because, it, because it's at an angle, it's harder to to cut it in place, so to say. So I'm drawing where I think it needs to be and then cut it and then still need to recut it anyway, because, but it gives me an idea of where roughly I need to cut it. Still wasn't settled on the leg plates. So here I have another session of leg plate fitting, um, all kinds of stuff that I, uh, so I went through my bits box and looked up all kinds of stuff that, that resembled armor plates, um, which I collected on my, uh, on my desk, as you see here below the, the miniature, and I just put them into place with some sticky putty, kept coming back to those uh, warlord plates, but then tried to fill that hole with something, with some dreadnought claws or uh, warhound feet um, and then I stumbled on these which are war hound uh, lower leg plates and those resembled quite close, closely uh, some space marine lower grease right so I was I was kind of happy with that but then I needed to do something with the knee because there's a, a dip in the plate and then I found these um, uh, what you can see here the, from the Furioso, the Blood Angel Furioso Dreadnought, some extra armor plate. And now what you have here is the, that lower plate that you saw, which is what I finally went for. Um, which I'm, is what I'm going to glue into place now. That's from the Warlord Titan, but then from the upper arm 
like an inner armor plate that you usually cannot see because that huge armor plate is over it. But <laughs> I had those left for some reason, and those fitted very well. I just, I just, uh, yeah, happened upon them, and uh, I decided to go for those together with those knee plates from the uh, from the Furioso dreadnought. So these are all different plates from different miniatures, just repurposed to get a, uh, yeah, cool looking, a bit of a knight look to it. Yeah, so here I'm, uh, I've glued those uh, lower legs into place, and I'm still deciding on the on the knee knee plates. But in the end, I will go for the uh, for the Furioso plates. And then I also thought it was time to clean up the feet so that I could glue the legs onto the feet so that I didn't have to bother with all that sticky putty on them anymore because. I knew that once I started working on the upper body, that would cause it to fall over many times if I still had it uh, fully on, on putty, both below and up on the feet. Yeah, so back to the upper body. Um, here I glued the upper body together already. And I wanted to angle the arms a bit because the arms of the original Dreadnought are flat to his side and I want to angle them outwards. So I cut a bit from the behind of the... Um, of the joint uh, here I thought uh, maybe a, a big ass missile launcher would be cool to have on it uh, went back to those warload plates that I had before I thought yeah this uh, this looks cool I think I can live with this I also had the front plate attached already for the for the dreadnought this is from an old one I think and I want to have a flag on there because uh, yeah flags are awesome right so I used the flagpole from the ironclad as well but I uh, removed a bit of the, the pole length because it was a bit too high. And yeah, as missile launchers are cool, if you have one, why not two? And if you have one attached to the arm, why not have another one attached to the one on the arm? So that you have more missile launchers. Or a big laser, it's also cool. Very big laser. This is from the Warlord Titan again. That kit is fantastic. I have so many parts left of that. And yeah, some other missile launchers. I don't know, flamers, melter guns. And there I ended up with that melter, melter cannon from the, the uh, it's uh, like the enormous melter from the Armager. Knight, some different cannons, more cannons, missile launchers again, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, maybe this one, all right. Time to attach the left arm. I want to pin it again because uh, as I angled it backwards, I don't have uh, and and I removed the pin of the uh, the original model. I didn't have uh, like my, I mean the m most of the structure was gone, so I needed to pin it. At least I thought I needed to pin it. So I uh, made a hole on both sides again, and I uh, so I used both super glue and plastic glue. I used super glue on the. Uh, on the rod on the pin and plastic glue on the back side of the of the where the plastic meets and then I added some some putty to keep it into place um, while while the plastic glue was drying uh, at this point I decided on the the big melta from the armiger the armiger uh, war glaive and, and yeah so I glued that on there as well as you can see here I'm moving quite fast once I have decided and attaching this this melt cannon is uh, quite hard because it's right now it's only attached with one pin so it moves a lot a bit and you can see me moving it around a million times before i have it fixed into place it's also because the glue on the arm is not really dry yet but if you're a bit careful you can you can work on it while the plastic glue is drying and uh, i also added more structural integrity to it by adding these uh, plastic rods to it as you can see here so i'm Cutting it into, sh into shape and then uh, gluing it on. This was a very finicky work. As you can see, I've been doing it over a million times before gl finally glue it in place. This was quite frustrating, I would have to say. So the outside and the inside. So now there's a plastic rod around the metal wire that's in there, around the pin. Uh, so you don't even see it anymore. I could also have added the, the plastic uh, rod around the metal pin before attaching the melta that would have been efficient but yeah uh, as again I'm working quite organically and it doesn't always 
work out as efficient <laughs> as you could be if you plan things ahead. Sometimes I plan things ahead, sometimes things happen and I decide, decide after uh, gluing everything into place that another option would be better. It doesn't really matter, I mean, uh, you'll get there in the end anyway. And here I'm again test fitting and just seeing does it work or not. Adding more rods to the front, does it look sturdy enough visually? Um, and then adding more rods, put one to the front. Yeah, this was a lot of tiny, tiny work in, in a tight space, which uh, caused the following thing. Oh, Godverdomme. My name is yeah, this was not my best session <laughs> ever, but anyway, it did work out in the, in the end. So you see here again that I'm constantly moving back and forth between gluing something into place and then seeing how it works on the entire model. And I think Adam Savage had a very cool video about this some a while, about, a while ago about uh, paneling. And, and it's like uh, the thing that you're looking for is, is the visual of the, the whole object. Do you like it? Does it, does it tell you a story? Does it, does it speak to you? And uh, I think that's, that's also the, the way I work. So I, I look at the, the whole model as, a, as one thing and then see where, where, is, a, where is the story missing? What, what part of the miniature is blank right now? Where is not enough detail? And uh, yeah. That, that's it. And here I decided to go for a different shoulder plate in the end because I, I was fixed on those warlord plates. But then I, I found this one, which I liked even better. And as this is going to be in uh, an Iron Hands Dreadnought, I liked that, that very big gear icon. I needed to clean it up a bit because I want to have uh, to paint a uh, an Iron Hands hand in the center. So I need to get rid of the T. Um, but then I could just glue, glue it into place. And I was quite happy with with this uh, rounded shape of armor and then I needed something for the other shoulder as well didn't want to have two of the same plates but I went for this plate of the uh, the ambot which I thought looked uh, cool on an uh, yeah an assault dreadnought with those uh, those nubs on it still thinking about missile launchers I like missile launchers don't know why but yeah they didn't make it onto the model in the end because I just could not fit it on there. Um, maybe on another one. Yeah, so I glued the plate into place and then it was time for detailing. So first the, uh, the flag, the flagpole on top. Some super glue, there we go. And once I had a flag on top, it really reminded me of the, the there's an old artwork from, I don't know, second edition or something about from a, a Blood Angels Dreadnought with a Melta gun and a claw and a flag. And yeah, this really uh, reminds me of that one. It's a very cool look. Now, we're nearly there. Uh, last things I did, did was a couple of details. And uh, first of all was a targeting system for the Melta. I don't know why a Melta needs a targeting system, but I just thought it looked cool. So I had a small laser left from one uh, Adeptus Titanicus Knight. I think it's an auto cannon or something, or a, uh, a last cannon, I'm not sure. But it's it's tiny and it fitted very well as a targeter on, on the bottom of that, uh, that dreadnought hole. So I just cut that off and glued it into place. That was a very quick quick conversion once I saw it and then um, yeah as the like the whole idea of this this uh, thing was a uh, this dreadnought was going to be a captain dreadnought like a captain interred in a dreadnought armor so it need to have some communications relay or whatever and then 10 hour scanner or something so I had this uh, this bit from the Ravenwing upgrade sprue it's for a land speeder I think and I thought that looks very cool, but I don't know where, until I figured out it could very well fit onto the back of the engine. So I decided to cut off one of the exhaust pipes and make that into a, uh, an antenna part, as you can see here. And it seems to fit perfectly on there right now, but I need, did need to, to cut away a bit of the inside of that uh, antenna and the outside of the 
the exhaust port to make it fit. Uh, yeah, there wasn't on camera, but I, I did do it. And then there was a tiny gap left on the back, so I added a uh, small... Oh yeah, at first I wanted to see if I could add uh, like a smaller exhaust, because I removed the exhaust, but I didn't like it there. So I, I fitted it on, but it didn't really work, so I didn't use it. And in the end I uh, just used a small, something like a battery pack or a generator. I don't know exactly what it is, but it, uh, it fitted very well into that, that small gap. It's, uh, it's actually from a Necron uh, gun, like a gauze, gauze gun or something, I don't know what it is. So fitted well, I just glued it in there and thought, okay, I can fix up any holes that's left with, uh, with uh, cables later on. And then finally, uh, a light, searchlight on top, or maybe a beacon or whatever it might be. It just uh, I needed to break up the, the top of the model. So that's the whole build. Um, the model is not done yet because all the green stuff still needs to be done. Lots of cables uh, and, and filling up some gaps. But the build phase is done and I'm uh, very happy with how it turned out. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Goodbye.